Let's all welcome our dear brother, preacher and friend, Brother Bo Sanchez! <laughs> I just want to check, uh, are, are there some people here who want to get rich? Yeah. Sort of like expected that. I want you to greet somebody beside you with a handshake or a big hug and tell that person, you already are rich. You already are rich. You really are. How many of you have come for the first time? Just want to see a raise of hands. You've come for the first time. I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. God bless you. This is your home now. Make us your family. We would love to see you every Sunday. At the end of the feast, by the way, please go to the lobby. We'll give you a welcome gift. Thank you so much for being here. Everybody say this with me. God is here. The reason why you come is because God is here. It's, it's not because of me. It's not because of the beautiful place or the wonderful music. It's because God is here. And you know that when you come here, you're plugging into the only source of all blessing, only source of all grace, which we all need. Yes? yes. You may have come here with a challenge in your life, a difficulty or a trial. You may come here with a need. You may come here with a burden. But you've come to the right place. Because God is here. God is here. Oh, and we're starting a brand new series entitled Happy, Healthy, Holy Money. I want to warn you. I want to warn you that what you're going to hear from me in this whole month are stuff that you won't hear from 90% of the preachers out there. I'm going to tell you controversial stuff, stuff that people criticize me for. I, I receive nasty emails telling, telling me that I'm, I'm an antichrist and, and that I'm a false prophet and I bring people into hell because of what I teach. You know what? I don't care what people say. I'm going to teach you what I believe you need to hear that will bless your life so that you can become a blessing to other people. This is my commitment to you. And, and the reason why people do not understand, and, and the reason why people criticize me is this. In this whole month, you're going to hear me teach you how to become rich. And people don't understand that. People say, whoa, Bo, this shouldn't be in church. And my, ask, my question is, why? Why shouldn't it be? It should be here because if you're going to hear how to become rich from other places, guess what? It, it, it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to be in line with what you believe in. Am I right? Let, let's learn it from God. Let's learn it from how God wants you to become rich. Amen? Are you ready? To receive the blessing of God today? Yes. Come, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from God, and it comes down from heaven. Everybody say, good gift. Good. Do you think money can become a good gift? Yes. 
do you, do you think money can actually come from God? You know, I, I really believe this, that God doesn't mind that you become rich, but on one condition. The condition is this, that you be rich on the inside before you are rich on the outside. Because if you are rich on the inside, then you can handle, everybody say handle. You can handle the money that will come in. But if you are not rich on the inside, the money that will come in will destroy you. There's a guy, his name is Jack. He won the lotto in the U.S. $315 million. Woo! But it destroyed him. You read his story, it destroyed his life, his family, destroyed his marriage. His kids turned to drugs. Jack said, I wish I never became rich. But that's because he was not rich on the inside. Be rich on the inside because money is a magnificent magnifier. Everybody say magnifier. magnifier. Money will magnify that which is within you. If you are selfish inside you, money will magnify your selfishness. If you are broken within you, guess what? Money will magnify your brokenness. But if you are good and kind and gentle and self, selfless and disciplined, guess what? Money will magnify all that good stuff in you. And that's what we want to happen. Yes? I'll give you one more question and one more verse. Here's my next question to you. Do you think God is happy if you start earning a lot of money? Yes. You sure? Some of you have this, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you Psalms 35 verse 27. It says, read with me. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Did you read that? God takes pleasure. God takes delight when he sees you prosper. Wow. Wow. Hey, I can identify. I'm a father. When my son was five years old, I remember we were in a toy store. And my son said, Daddy, let's buy that toy. I want to buy that toy. I said, go ahead, son. Buy it with your own money. And my son said, okay. I don't have money. <laughs> and, and, my, and, and I told my son, start a business. And my son said, okay. You know, five years old, you don't know anything. Okay. What business? <laughs> sell something, I told my son. And he said, yes. What will I sell? <laughs> and I asked him, what do you want to sell? And he said, can I sell bamos? You know, the reason why he said that, because my friend and fellow preacher and, and builder, Pio Español, good, you know, he has this business that he distributes bangus longanisa, bangus sisig, bangus kekyam, bangus, you know, bangus, bangus, bangus. And, and, and so I called Pio, Pio, can my son be your dealer? And Pio said, y your son, five years old? And I said, yeah. And so Pio said, okay. And so I told my son, you're a dealer now. And so we went home. I typed the list of Bangus products that he will sell with the price, you know, prices. And be while it was chugging out the computer printer, my son entered the room wearing a yellow necktie. <laughs> and he got the leaflet and he said, thank you, daddy. And he rode his bike and I had to run after him. He went to his first victim, <laughs> rang the doorbell. His grandmother came out gave the leaflet and he said call me anytime and then he you know it, it, this is this is quite embarrassing in the next few days every time i have guests at home <laughs> my son will be wearing his yellow necktie you know over his sando and his shorts yellow necktie and he'll be distributing his leaflets in the first three weeks he sold three thousand pesos worth of bonus but the most wonderful thing, the, the most wonderful sight I saw as a father was two months later, my son was seated on the living room floor with a toy in front of him, the same toy he pointed two months ago that he wanted to buy. He bought it with his own money. I felt so happy. 
I, I felt so proud as a father. I said, that's my boy. And you know what? I believe your father in heaven is exactly in the same way when he sees you earning a lot of money, he's huge. That's my boy. That's my girl. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Father, I thank you for this day. I ask you, make me rich on the inside. Make me grow in my love for you. Strengthen my relationship with you so that I can handle wealth that will come on the outside. I ask you, bless me today abundantly, exceedingly, powerfully, in Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. I want you to touch somebody beside you and tell that person, God will speak to you today. There are three kinds of rich people in the world. The reason why we're confused is we think there's only one. No, there are three. There are three kinds of rich people on planet Earth. And the first one is what I call the filthy rich. Everybody say filthy rich. The filthy rich is the typecast image that's in the minds of many people every time they think of a rich person. The filthy rich person is a person who has so much wealth and is greedy and is selfish and is, and, and is cruel sometimes. And, and he steps on the toes of other people just to get his grab of money and everybody say filthy rich. Friends, when, when people say money does not buy happiness, it's because they're thinking of the filthy rich. Because the filthy rich people are never happy. Agree? How can you be happy if you're selfish? How can you be happy if you're greedy? You can't. You're miserable. I know of some filthy rich people. They're not happy. It's true, money does not buy happiness. How many of you watched the movie, The Lord of the Rings? Can I see a raise of hands if you watched that movie? Last week, my sons wanted to watch it, and so we did. This is a trilogy. Those of you who didn't watch it, it's a trilogy. Three hours long per movie. So nine hours. We didn't watch it in one day. It was every night. We had a family movie night. Every night, my wife would cook popcorn. And, and we beautiful, beautiful movie. There is this interesting character in those three movies. Gollum. <laughs> Gollum. And, you know, he's ugly. And he's a monster. But you know what? In the story, he was not a monster at the beginning. He was normal. He was good looking. He was a hobbit. But, well, he found a ring. And the ring was so powerful that he became so engrossed and absorbed by the ring. And he put it on his finger and he, 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 it, it consumed him. And what happened was, well, he became a monster. He, he could not think of anything else but the ring. And did not sleep anymore, did not eat anymore. It destroyed him. The filthy rich person is exactly like Gollum. You get absorbed by your wealth and you cannot think of anything else but your wealth and it destroys you. You do not possess money. Money possesses you. You don't want to be a filthy rich person, do you? No. You don't want to be like Gollum. No, you won't. Everybody say this with me. Money does not buy happiness. 
they made a survey of the happiest people on planet Earth. They do the surveys quite often. Well, last year, they did it again. And very interesting. They surveyed 150,000 people all over the world. Do you know who are the happiest countries in the world? Can I tell you? Can I? Paraguay, Panama, Guatemala, El Salvador, Venezuela. What do you notice? Thailand, Philippines, always there. <laughs> never, we never fail. We're always in the top 10 happiest countries in the world. Every time they make a survey of the happiest people in the world, the Philippines is always there. But, but look, look, at the, look at the countries that I just mentioned. Look at the countries that, are they rich countries? No, but they're the happiest countries in the world. Where's America? Where's Australia? Where's Japan? They're not in the happy list. France and Germany are number 47, tied together, tied with Somalia. The unhappiest country, according to that survey, is Singapore. A very prosperous country. It's a first world country in Asia. Unhappy. Everybody say this with me, money does not buy happiness. But you know what? Many people, and I agree with that, money does not buy happiness. But people have a false conclusion. Everybody say that with me. False conclusion. False conclusion. They think this way. Many good people, many Christians, many preachers, many priests, many nuns, they will say this to you. Money does not buy happiness. So don't become rich. It won't make you happy. Replay, replay, replay. <laughs> think it through, huh? Think through the logic. If there is logic, money does not buy happiness. Therefore, do not become rich. Do not try to become rich. Do not pursue riches because it won't make you happy. Is there logic? Is there logic? You don't even know. You're, you're, you're confused. Parang tama mo eh. Parang tama yung sinabi eh. No! No, I'll show you in a while why there's no logic. But let me just say this. That we just studied the first kind of rich, which is what? Filthy rich. We have to discuss what are the two other types of rich people. The second type of rich people is the guilty rich. Everybody say that. There are guilty rich people. Good people, church-going people, Bible-reading people, praying people. These are what you, these, these, they're very susceptible to become guilty rich. A woman came up to me, Brother Bo, can you pray for me? I said, sure. She told me, I'm very unhappy. I should not be unhappy. I should be happy, but, but I'm, I'm not. Pray for me. And I said, why do you say that you should be happy? Well, I'm earning a lot of money. You know, Brother Bo, my salary is three times more than my old job. And when I entered into my new job, they gave me a fat, fat bonus. And I should be happy, but I'm not. I'm miserable. Wow. Well, I kind of like checked her out and said, how's your marriage and how's your spiritual life and how's this and how's that? Everything was going fine. And then I thought of a question. I said, are you comfortable earning a lot of money? And you know, at first she said, yes. But the inflection and the tone of her voice made me think, no, she's not convinced. I kept talking, I kept asking, I kept digging. And it came out. It came out. When she was a kid, her parents taught her that money was bad. And that talking about money was bad. And that thinking about money was bad. And it was bad to talk about money in the dining room. It was bad talking about money when we're having... It was bad saying, how much are we going to earn there? It was bad saying, how much are we going to... How, how, much, how much profit? You know, the words profit was bad words, you know. And, and, and oh, rich people were bad people. She was raised up in that way. And so, as an adult, when she was earning a lot of money, there was guilt.
inside. She was earning too much money. That's how she felt. And, and she felt guilty. There are guilty rich people. You know what I told her? I told her, you need to change your thinking. This is false guilt. And, and I told her, read my books. Eight Secrets of the Truly Rich. The Eight Habits of the Happy Millionaire. Read the, the, my book on Prosper. Change the way you think about money. And then I said, keep attending the feast. Because here at the feast, you're going to change the way you think. The way you think about money. You'll be surrounded by people who think with abundance. Who think not in a negative way about money. And I, I say the same thing to you. Look at the person beside you. Does that person beside you have an abundance mindset? Or does that person have a scarcity mindset? And I pray that you, you will look at money in a different way because of the series that we're going through today. The first type of rich person is the filthy rich. The second type of person is the guilty rich. And the third type of per rich person is the truly rich. Truly rich. And, and everybody say this with me. I am truly rich. Poke somebody beside you and tell that person, you are truly rich. You are truly rich. Money does not buy happiness. Here is, here's, here's where I, I want to refute that logic. I, yes, money does not buy happiness. But friends, who told us that God designed money to buy happiness anyway? No! God did not design money to buy happiness. God designed money to buy helpfulness. You see, you don't become happy by pursuing happiness. You become ha happy in an oblique way, the principle of obliquity. You don't become happy by pursuing happiness. You become happy by serving and loving and caring and dying to yourself and forgetting yourself and contributing your life so that someone else may live. People who cannot thank you and people who cannot pay you back, you give yourself to them. Bingo! You're happy. Money was designed by God not to make you happy. Money was designed by God so that you can help more. And in the process of helping more, that's when you become happy. Wow! Wow! So to become truly rich is to receive the blessing of God so that you can help. Ask me who? Complete sentence, who will I help? First of all, your family. First of all, your family. You've got family members around you? Wow. T tell that person, I'm here to help. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. Everybody read this together, please. But if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those in his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Tough words. Tough words. You know, a friend of mine, she called me up. She said, my husband left me three years ago. And she said, you know, we've got three kids. But Brother Bo, for the past three years, my ex-husband has not sent a single peso for our kids. You know, this is more common than you think. They made a survey, 70% of single parent families are without a father. Are without a father. You know, I, about my friend, the single mom, whose husband, ex-husband, has not given a single peso, I, I, I cringed. I, I, say, I, I said, I mean, I, I, I won't question why you separated, you know, may, may, maybe there's, there's real reasons there and I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to question that, but, but you, you don't abandon your kids. 
The world has many problems, agree? We've got poverty, we've got corruption, we've got war. But listen to me, listen carefully. I believe that the core problem of this world is the problem of fatherhood. Fathers are not fathers. Because if the fathers will only raise their kids selflessly, we will have so solved many, many, many of our world problems. I believe that. I... Fathers, when God called you to be a father, when you have sons and daughters, God gave you two jobs. Your first job is to train your children to love God. And, and your second job is to train them to earn money. Yes, those are your two jobs, especially if you have sons. Fathers, train your sons to love God and earn money. That's your role. And when you don't do that, your sons will grow up not loving God and not knowing how to earn money. That's your job. You, you've you've, you've got to... To be truly rich is to help your family, to provide for your family. That's what God wants you to do. No, 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 not, not, not to, to expect that you give a luxurious life to your family. That's not God's, you know, what God wants you to do, but to provide adequately for their needs. For husband and wife to, to help one another and for the adult children to help one another so that you can provide for the whole household. Do I hear an amen? amen. But, everybody say, but. but. It's not limited to your family. When God blesses you, He wants to give you more than enough because He wants you to help your bigger family. Everybody say, bigger family. Bigger. To look at other people and make them part of your family. That's the goal. That's the goal. And this is what wealth is all about. Can I invite you to stand up, please? I have, I have a prophecy to tell you. Will you listen really well to every word I'm going to say? This is a prophecy. Will you? Everybody say, I'm listening. If you remain here in our community and if you keep on listening to this word and if you keep on reading the books I tell you to read it, and if you, if you get nourished by, by this kind of atmosphere of, of looking at money in a positive light and, and thinking in abundance and not scarcity, of, of telling people that you, you need to receive the blessings of God so that you can share it to others, of, of thinking and the, you know, of, of welcoming entrepreneurship and, and welcoming business and investments, you know, T you, for, the, for this whole month, we're, we're going to be talking all about this. And here's my prophecy. You, in 10 to 20 years, you will be the richest good people here in the Philippines. And I am not pulling your leg. I am not joking. You keep on doing what you're doing and, and you apply the teachings. You're going to see this. You're going to see this. People standing here on stage teaching you how to invest your money in the right way growing your money over time, you will become multimillionaires. No doubt about it. That's what's going to happen. And I'm excited. Ask me why. Imagine all the people we can help. Yes? Imagine all the people we can help. This is my experience. Many years ago, I was a poor missionary. And I was very, very happy. And there was this family I was helping. Every time I go to church to pray, the husband, the wife, and the two kids were there living in the sidewalk. They didn't have a home. 
And every time I would pass by, I would go to the bake shop, the bakery that was very close by, buy pandesal, buy bread, and then I would give that to the family. Every time I would pass by, if I had money, I'd dig in, buy a few pieces of pandesal, give it to them. I love doing that. Would you love doing that? Yes. Great, great. But let me make a confession. There were days I couldn't do it <laughs> because there was nothing to pull out from my wallet. There was none. Today, things have changed in my life. I've welcomed the blessings of God. I have pursued God's plan for my life to become a blessing to other people. I've pursued entrepreneurship. I've built a few small businesses. Failed so many times. Stood up again, stood up again, stood up again. I've learned how to invest my money. In the past 13 years, I've done that. Today, today, my small businesses, they employ part-time and full-time more than a hundred people. Listen to me. Listen to me. When I was a poor missionary, I fed one family. Today, I'm feeding 100 families. That, that is what it means to become truly rich. It's not about you. It's not. You think it's about you? No. It's about others. Are you getting me? How selfish are we to think that to become rich is for us? No. It's so that you can be able to get out of yourself and die to yourself and forget yourself so that others will live. And that's why I want you to become rich. I want you to become rich because it's not about being filthy rich. It's not about being guilty rich. It's about being truly rich. Yes? One last thing before we pray. In the first book of Genesis, Cain killed Abel. Remember that story? Cain killed his brother. And then God began to look. Where's Abel? Where's Abel? And then he, he, looked, he, he saw Cain. And, and, and God said, Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? That question was found right here at the very first book of the Bible in Genesis, right here at the beginning. You know what? Here's what I believe. The rest of the Bible, the rest of the Bible until the book of Revelations is an answer to that question of Cain. Am I my brother's keeper? And the whole Bible shouts a resounding, yes, you are your brother's keeper. It is your duty. I was supposed to say this next week, but I'll say it to you now. It is your moral obligation to become rich because it's not about you. It's not about you. Do it for others. Do it for God. Do it for God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Surrender to God. Everybody say this after me. Father, I thank you. I welcome you in my life. I want to love you. I want to surrender myself to you. I ask you, train me to become a blessing to other people. Enrich my life. Make me rich on the inside. Brothers and sisters, you know what many of you need now is really a relationship with God. Don't, don't try to become rich without a relationship with God because that, that's going to mess you up. That's going to mess you up. 
you're, you're just going to be sad and miserable. And, and No, no. First things first. Start a wonderful relationship with God. Give yourself to Him. Live for Him. Love Him. Love God. Love God right now. Tell Him that you will live for Him. And then put every area of your life under His Lordship.